Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Today I wanted to talk to you about a really famous missing 411 case. It's a very interesting incident. It happened in 1969, June 14th. A young boy named Dennis Martin vanished from the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Dennis and his family were out in the park. They ran into another family who were coincidentally named the Martins as well, which is very strange. The kids were playing hide and seek together and they were running around through the woods. Dennis's dad, William, was keeping a close eye on him. He seen exactly where Dennis went off into the woods to go hide. And, uh, you know, eventually it was time to stop playing. They were calling the kids back to the area and Dennis didn't come. So William went out to investigate the location that he last saw Dennis, because he observed him go off into the bushes. And uh, there was no sign of Dennis, nothing. So William starts freaking out. He's searching around the area, probably frantically, and there's nothing. So they end up calling the Forest Service. The Forest Service officials don't show up for like an hour. By this time, it's not looking good. There's no sign of Dennis at all. No clothing, no nothing. He was just gone. Very weird. Now, the interesting thing about this case is that there was another family not too far away called the Key family and they were interested in wildlife, they were trying to find bears. A park employee told them to go to Rowan Creek if they wanted to see bears, which is about an hour and a half walk, maybe two hours from where Dennis disappears. They go to this creek. This is like an hour after Dennis is missing, but of course William Martin doesn't know this at the time. So the key families at this Rowan Creek at one point, they hear a blood-curdling scream. Just a disgusting, terrifying scream. And their boy looks up on this hill. He's like, Dad, look, there's a bear running. And the dad looks, and he's like, No, this isn't a bear. It looks more like a man than anything. And that was very, very odd. You know, that there's something lurking around in the mountains pretty close to where Dennis disappeared, letting out a scream that sounds like what I imagine, you know, your typical Sasquatch vocalization to sound like. Now the Key family was actually interviewed by the FBI because the FBI got involved and uh, he informed them of what he saw. They withheld this information from William. They were supposed to tell William everything about what was going on in the park and about the search, but they were holding this information back. Eventually, later on, William, of course, found out. But the strange thing about it is that, apparently, not only did they see this being, or man, or creature, or whatever it was on this hill, but apparently, this creature had something on its shoulder, or on its back. And that's implied to be Dennis Martin. That's why the FBI and whoever else was involved was very hush-hush about it and didn't want to tell William. It's very unsettling, very creepy, knowing that they might have seen who or what snatched Dennis up. And of course there's other theories as to what happened to Dennis, like did Dennis just get lost? Did he get snatched by a predator or a bear or anything like that? Was it an alien abduction? I mean, the theories get really crazy. Um, it could be something very simple, like just a typical abduction of a child by a human being. But then you have to think, like, what are the odds of a child predator or some sort of creep in the woods being at that same spot waiting for someone to come around? The odds I don't think are that good, especially, like, national parks are huge. The odds are very small that somebody was in that same spot. Another weird thing about the story is that eventually a group of Green Berets were brought in. And as I know it, they didn't want anything to do with the Forest Service or the FBI. They were just very reclusive on their own. They didn't even want to know like where they've searched already. Nothing. Like They didn't want to know anything. They were just their own private team. Nobody knows what they were doing. It was never revealed what they found. And like, I don't know, the Green Berets seem to me like a very, like those are the big guns. Like why would you need the Green Berets there unless something very serious was happening? Like, it just seems odd to me that, you know, like the FBI is already there and search and rescue teams. It should be enough to locate a six year old boy. I don't think you need like military power to, to find this child, but 
you know? I guess the reasoning for them being there could be that there was a strange creature there, or a Sasquatch creature. It's not the first time we've heard stories about military involved in, you know, either the capture or killing of these Sasquatch creatures, you know, and maybe the government already knows about them, I don't know. It's all just theories. Nonetheless, it's a very strange case. These missing 411 cases, I think, are some of the strangest stories I've ever heard. Sometimes these people go missing, um, mostly children. But if they are found alive, they don't remember anything, which is very odd. That kind of more relates to, like, the UFO phenomenon and, you know, missing time and missing memory, that sort of thing. So, very strange. They seem to travel like very far distances too, like almost what would seem impossible to the average child. Like, there was, I, I just recently watched the Missing 4 on 1 documentary. Um, there was a case on there where this two year old boy disappeared and uh, he was found very, very, very far away from his last seen location. And in a short amount of time, it seems very impossible that he traveled so far in in that amount of time and he was found alive and yeah he didn't remember anything still doesn't remember anything he's still alive today um, interesting documentary I'd recommend checking it out I finally got around to watching it I know it's been out for a while but I thought it was kind of odd how in the film they didn't really go over any theories as to what is going on. It was just more of a presentation of strange incidents and cases. I'm not a movie critic, I'm not going to do like a movie review about it, but that's just my thought. I wish it kind of would have went into like some of the strange theories as to what's going on, you know? Because we all know like the Missing 411 books and you hear like the Coast to Coast AM podcast with David Polites and they go over all the strange theories and Bigfoot is one of those theories and you know there's lots of cases especially in First Nations culture of Sasquatch coming in and snatching children in the night or snatching women in the night so it's it's not a new thing we've all heard these stories before um, but yeah let me know what you guys think about this case I think it's very interesting if you know any more interesting cases like it or even stranger ones Put them in the comments below or send me a message. I've been trying to go through all the comments. It's getting really hard to respond to everything. If I don't respond right away or if I don't comment on your comment, don't take offense to it. I'm trying to get through everything. It's just piling up faster and faster nowadays. But let me know what you guys think about this case. I think it's very interesting. Um, what are your theories as to what is going on? Put them in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And thanks for watching this episode of Mountain Beast Mysteries.